Hello and welcome to the Everything Is Black and White podcast. Andrew Muscovy are joined by Anya Castle, United Editor Aaron Stokes. Special episode to bring you this evening, Tuesday the 21st of November. As you guys are well aware, the Premier League held a vote earlier today all about banning loan deals between associated clubs. And a lot of people felt that came um, up because Newcastle United have got an interest in Ruben Nevis, who of course plays for one of the Saudi Arabian teams owned by part owners of Newcastle United, the Public Investment Fund. Well, I feel like I'm on the X Factor. The results are in, Aaron, <laughs> and it has, some will say, gone in Newcastle United's favour. It needed 14 votes, 14 clubs out of the 20 to pass. It ended in a 13-7 to 7, uh, ratio in favour of the ban, but that didn't, that didn't meet the magic number 14. So it means the vote has been rejected by the Premier League clubs. Your initial reaction to that news? Um, yeah, look, you know, there was whispers this afternoon that it, you know, Newcastle United and other clubs were weren't, you know, they were going to be very surprised if it was passing. And and this is despite, you know, the fact what we spoke about yesterday. A lot of these teams have an associated links with them. It's not just Newcastle United that was involved, that you've got City, Chelsea, Brighton, West Ham, a lot of other clubs that owners um have also got interest in other clubs. So it'll be very, very interesting to see the seven that have voted against and the 13 that have voted with. As you say, 14 was the threshold. It hasn't been met. And it means that if Newcastle United desire in January, they can go and loan players from Saudi Arabian owned clubs, which we know are Al Nazar, uh, Al Halal, Al Ali, and Al Ihad. Yeah, the four there that the, uh, the PFI own. Now, it does, on one hand, seem like a victory for Newcastle United, because if this had gone through, then the, the theory from, from quite a few people within the Newcastle United fan base would have been there's an agenda against Newcastle, etc., etc. One hand, it is good that Newcastle United are free to loan and deal with uh, whoever they like, as long as it is uh, deemed a fair market value. On the other hand, Aaron, I think we're both of agreement that, you know, really loan deals between associated clubs shouldn't be allowed. On the first point, how do you see it? Is it a victory for Newcastle United? I think certainly fans will think it is. A lot of fans have had um, an opinion the last couple of days that this was all brought about by Ruben Neves and the interest in him. You know, the Premier League clubs have, have tried to stress that that isn't the case, but you do get the feeling that it's very, very coincidental. You also get the feeling that a lot of these new rules have been brought in um, since Newcastle United were taken over by the Public Investment Fund. Um, but look, you know, let's not start talking about conspiracies and all that because we know that there, there isn't an agenda against Newcastle United and they are just trying to make the league fairer. Um, is it a victory for them? I mean, I suppose it depends what the January plans are. Um, you know, if they do have grand plans of going and loaning some of these Saudi players, which, as we discussed yesterday, I'm, I'm not too keen on, then it's a win for them. Um, but as I say, I think we'll know more in the coming days as to which clubs have tried to, to try to stop this. And yeah, indeed. And, and I guess also... The point being is that really when we kind of wanted it passed, I think, from a, from an overall footballing perspective, because it, it isn't right. Clubs should not be allowed to loan players between uh, between each other. I mean, yeah, I, th I think, you know, as I said, we discussed yesterday about how uncomfortable we felt and we sort of, you know, felt it was a little bit murky. Um, you know, other fans will see it the other side of the coin, say if, you know, an owner has interest in two clubs, what's to stop them? you know, using each other um, for one of those game. My view is, is with you that I, I think, you know, there shouldn't be that. And I personally don't want to see Newcastle United going out and signing players from Saudi Arabia, never mind loaning them. Um, so, But yeah, I think there'll be a lot of fans and I think and we're very, very pleased that this hasn't gone through. There'll be a lot of fans from other clubs angry, won't they? They'll be uh, pushing theories of their own about how this one's got through. What do you think the reaction will be from potentially the likes of I don't know, Liverpool? But again, we don't. It's, it's difficult to say because we don't know which clubs have voted for, which clubs have voted against, and which clubs have been pushing the vote. But there will be some reaction from across the Premier League, um, especially the fans who will be angry that this indeed has not been passed. Yeah, absolutely. I think one club that you know for certain that will have been on the the side of the seven is Crystal Palace and Steve Parrish, who is. Um, you know, really, really pushed hard since the Newcastle United takeover. He's spoken very publicly about his sort of concern over Saudi uh, 
the Saudi influence in the club. I think you'll also have Tottenham and Liverpool who have also made no secret of their sort of disdain for the ownership. Um, those two clubs also don't really have any conflicts at the minute between associated clubs. You'd expect them to be on the side of the, the seven as well. Um, sorry, of the, of the 13. Um, and I think in terms of other fans, I mean, you only have to look at the the reaction to the goal that was given against Arsenal every week to see, you know, just how much of a, um, what's the word? Just how much Newcastle United are in the minds of some of these fans. You know, the a lot of talk of conspiracies and paying off the PG, MOL, and all that sort of stuff. Um, which is rubbish. Which is of course rubbish. Ridiculous. But I think, I mean, I haven't been on social media really in the, in the sort of twenty minutes ago um, that it happened. But I suspect that will be um, a little bit of a meltdown from other clubs. Do you think there would have been this vote had Newcastle United not been a real challenger of the so-called elite clubs? Um, look, I don't know. It, it's hard to say. You, you you don't know. And as I stressed earlier, the Premier League insists that this has nothing to do with the loans. I mean, I know they're also talking about you know bringing in um, commercial uh, rules about fair market value for deals such as that. Um, which looks like that has also been voted against, um, which you know doesn't really sit well, well with me either. To be fair, there should be those fair market value tests. Um, but look, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm hesitant to to go down that conspiracy route. Do we have any idea how these kind of meetings work? So there's been pictures of, of Amanda Stavely uh, going in or exiting the the hotel, the you know the place where this meeting is taking place down in London. Yeah. Is it a case that Amanda Stavely goes in with all the other representatives of the 20 clubs and there's a debate there's a the, you know the, 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 there's chatter there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a chance to persuade you know clubs that this is the right move that's the right move don't vote against do uh, vote for it is that how it works yeah very much so i think you know as you said all 20 representatives from the top flight clubs go in meet in a very swanky london hotel um and very much like these debates you see in parliament where they spend two or three hours plead in their case, two or, or, you know, four or against, and then ultimately they go and vote and do exactly what they were going to do before they went into that meeting. Um, we know that Newcastle United and, sorry, the, you know, the, the related party loan um, topic wasn't the only topic of conversation at the shareholders meeting today. There was also a lot of talk about Everton's point deduction, a lot of talk about Manchester City. Um, and as I just mentioned, you know, obviously talk about uh, the commercial deals. Um, so, yeah, that, that that's pretty much the gist of it. There's been a lot of talk about Dan Ashworth playing a masterclass here. And we spoke on Monday's episode about how you guys got to, to chat to him and he kind of, you know, you said he, he dipped his toes in the water just to try and get a feeling of, of the temperature regarding a potential move for Ruben Neves. Now, a lot of people are saying he's done really well because what he's done is he, he's put it out into the open, out into the public. It's alerted other clubs potentially what is going to go down. Do you think... I mean, is that a realistic claim, do you think? Or do you think that, you know, that, that again, people just kind of putting two, two, two and two together and getting six? Well, just to give a bit of context on, on the Dan Ashworth chart, he spoke to um, North East based reporters at the very start of the month. It was, it was a very hastily arranged um, encounter, shall I say, in the sense that Newcastle United played, um, I can't remember who they played, maybe Wolves. Um, and there was whispers that maybe reporters would get to speak to Dan Ashworth in the coming days. Next thing you know, Eddie Howe was doing his press conference, his pre-match press conference, and straight away after that, the North East Press was given access for about half an hour to Dan Ashworth. Now, the club have done that off their own back. Some will say it was to get you know the point out. He was, of, of course, asked about what they were going to do to replace Sandro Tsnali. He was also asked about um, what they would do about Ruben Neves and, and Dan Ashworth came out and said, um, at the moment, there is nothing to stop us going out and loaning him. Now, a lot of people are pointing to that fact that, um, you know, is that Ashworth maybe, as I said yesterday, dipping his toe in the water to see how the Premier League clubs reacted. There's, of course, um, a report today in The Athletic by David Ornstein that uh, Ruben Neves is very, very happy at Al-Halal um, and that he won't be leaving in January either way, which is, with, is that is the case, then this has all been one, you know, master manipulation tactic. If Newcastle United never even have the interest in Ruben Neves in the first place, is it a smokescreen, as we said yesterday, for someone like Calvin Phillips or or another midfielder to sort of quietly come under the radar in uh, Newcastle view? Maybe. Um, 
So look, again, I'd, I'm hesitant to go down that conspiracy route, but a lot of fans, as you say, think that that was Dan Ashworth maybe you know, putting it out there and seeing how the other Premier League clubs reacted. It's really interesting to see the response on social media because a lot of the main media outlets are, you know, headlining everything on Newcastle United. Newcastle United now will be allowed to loan players from Saudi Arabia. And I kind of, it kind of just shows you how at the front of everyone's mind Newcastle United really are. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, look, while there's been massive denials about whether this was brought about because of Newcastle's interest in, in clubs. Um, but ultimately, that was the main talking point. You know, yes, I've just mentioned that a lot of these other Premier League clubs have got, um, you know, close links with other clubs. But you don't really feel like, you know, Arsenal are going to go out and loan players from Colorado Rapids because Stan Kroenke owns them. You don't really feel that like Chelsea are going to go out and loan players from Strasbourg in France. Newcastle United... Given how much Saudi uh, the Saudi clubs spent in the summer, the caliber of player they brought in, and how let's be frank, how easy those negotiations would be between Newcastle and one of those four Saudi clubs, I'm not surprised to see Newcastle headline. And you know it, that is really the main crux of the issue is that Newcastle United would now have a sex, essentially you know, unrivaled, you would say, access to four clubs who now possess major major talent in Saudi Arabia but as we discussed on the Monday show how many players that are over there and for the, those four clubs because what we didn't do really is look at players from those four clubs specifically but how many players are really going to improve Newcastle United's squad and it, it does seem to a certain degree that the clubs who've pushed this vote worrying about something that's coming down the line rather mm. than something that's going to happen in January you know it feels like in their head maybe someone massive is going to be bought up and then three months later be loaned to Newcastle United. Like, like, like there's a worry bigger than Ruben Neves, which is, again, it's totally unfounded. Yeah, but I, I don't think it should really... I know I've just said that about there, about Arsenal and Chelsea and other clubs who maybe wouldn't be doing those deals, but I think it shouldn't really matter the calibre of player that we're talking about, even if they're not going to improve Newcastle, which a lot of them would. Um there's still that murky aspect of the fact that you would have essentially two clubs negotiating with each other, the same owners um, maybe trying to, you know, strengthen one hand over the other. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of Premier League clubs, what well, 13 to be specific, will be very, very annoyed that this, let's remember, temporary measure won't be brought in. This was only going to be a stopgap until they could come up with a better plan in the summer, which again, as we said yesterday, smacks of desperation. They'll be very, very disappointed that this hasn't gone through. Do you suspect it's going to come down the line again? Yeah, of course it will. They will come again with a new proposal, something more concrete, something more permanent, not for January, but for the summer. And I wouldn't be surprised if if the tables turned in favour of the thing. Well, even more reason not to sign Ruben Neves because that's exactly what they'll hold up and say, well, look, we tried to ban it. You mm -hmm. went out and did it anyway. And it'll just get them even more heated up. Newcastle United don't need to sign players in Saudi. Yes, we spoke at length yesterday on the podcast about how much some of them would improve. Ruben Neves would improve Newcastle United. But the scouts that they're putting in place and, you know, where they're aiming, they do not need to go anywhere near Saudi, in my opinion. Stick to stick to players in Europe or the Premier League or from, you know, very, very obscure nations, which Dan Ashworth is absolutely key at, rather than going there. Let's say that the interest in, in, in Ruben Neves is not as strong as, as, as we're led to believe. Let's say the, the athletic report is 100% true and he, he's settled there. He's got no interest in moving to Newcastle and on the other hand, Newcastle United aren't even interested in him. What does Dan Ashworth get from doing that interview a few weeks back, getting out into the open? Like, what 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 does he achieve if the end goal isn't signing Ruben Neves? And what is he? What what have you cast United won out of this? Is it they've got one over the so-called elite who may or may not have you know pushed this for? I mean, we'll find out. But I mean, uh, maybe they have got one over them. Maybe it was a case of. I mean, look, maybe maybe Newcastle United were in for Ruben Neves after all. And Ashworth was just telling the truth that there's nothing stopping them. But it does seem like, you know, if Newcastle United, as it's now being reported, don't really stand a chance in it, there has to be an underlying message as to why that was put out the other week in such blatant terms. I mean, the main talking point after, and bearing in mind, Dan Ashworth got asked a load of questions about Sandro Tonali, 
and how much they knew about Milan, what they were going to do to recover him. A lot of questions about Tonali, but the main headline to come out of that 30-minute chat with journalists was Newcastle United can, and it looked like had interest in signing Ruben Neves in January, which was always going to get tons. Wagon. It is funny though, sitting here, and if we were asked to vote right now, one way or the other, would you ban it? Would you not? I still would be leaning towards banning it. I think just for the for the greater good of the game. Yeah, so that, and I know that we're a Newcastle United podcast, and a lot of Newcastle United fans will be listening to this saying, "How can you say that? You know, it, Newcastle United would, would get stronger for signing these players." For me, it's just too much of a too much of an overlap that I'm just not comfortable with. Still not comfortable with it. And I know that I know that people watching this after will will be very very vehemently disagree with me, but that's just that's just my moral stance at the moment. We know Eddie Howe will be asked about on Friday ahead of that Chelsea game. The Premier League does return, of course, this weekend. Myself and John Gibson will be back with the match preview on Thursday morning. In the meantime, head over to chroniclelive.co.uk for all the latest Newcastle United news.